Hi folks, Dave here. Part of being prepared for, say, a grid down scenario is to know the alternatives. Also, how to extract value from commonly dismissed or trivial items. In a grid down scenario, everything takes on new meaning. Resources are scarce and we have to do more with less. Years ago, I heard of someone trying to cook food with a tea light during a power outage and a big storm. But ever since then, I've been thinking about doing bigger and bigger things with minimal resources. Even tea lights. These little candles don't seem like much, but they are cheap and readily available. So this is one of the many experiments I've conducted in my solar workshop. Not everything is solar, there's quite a bit of other stuff going on as well. This is a thermal pile. Now it's a bit strange, but the word thermal pile is not something that's really associated with producing power. Usually it means thermocouples in series to generate a voltage, which is used for a measurement of temperature or something like that. There's a tea light candle. It looks like this. And that's powering a DC converter, which is right here. There's the loaded voltage right now. I'm not pulling a huge amount of current from it right now. I'm just testing this DC converter. I'm running some LEDs. This thing will run endless LEDs. I don't have enough LEDs to really stress it. I haven't spent a lot of time with thermal piles. I haven't spent a lot of time trying to generate power with heat from Peltier modules. I have to spend some time on it. I do want to familiarize myself with it. And this was a lot of work just to get here. I had a lot of frustration and failure. It's not extracting all of the heat that it could, but it's enough for me to test the idea. Of course, I could put a gigantic heat pipe on top, but I don't have one, so I'm using just water. And then when this gets too heated up, I just replace it. It's a simple thing to dump this out and pour some more water in. It doesn't take long. It's not a big deal. So the highest I've ever gotten on this particular setup is 3.6 to 3.7 volts. There's the meter right there. That's uh, open circuit, though. So you can think of this a lot like a crystalline solar cell. 3.7 volts is not its real voltage. So I will just go ahead and turn on the LEDs. I did have a DC converter on there, but I've taken that off, and now I'm just doing straight from the thermal pile, so that's going to load it down and pull the voltage way down, but that's alright. Let's go ahead and just hook these LEDs up and try them. These are green and red, so they're a much lower voltage. You can see that they light up, and it pulls the voltage down, because they're not a good match for this thermal pile. If you go over here to the blue ones, they're a lot brighter, and it's a lot better match pushing about 2.8 volts. That's a lot better. They're really quite bright. I wish I had more of the white ones. So my goal here is to try to use uh, probably a bigger LED, maybe a cob LED or something. Could make a lamp out of it. The idea of taking a tea light and turning it into a LED lamp is pretty neat, I think. Of course, I'm sure it's been done, but I want to see it for myself. You can store heat, for example, in a sand battery. And you can put it beneath the thermal pile and you can have the heat source go into generating electricity as well as filling up the heat mass. Here I don't have much of a heat mass, but I am testing these ideas. And I'm testing very radical elements in between the peltiers to see uh, how they perform. Uh, rare metals and other things that nobody really would give any attention to. Because you want to get the heat out, but you want to make sure you generate electricity. The problem with that is you can't tell heat what to do. You have to try to guide it. That starts to get a bit complicated. This is just a hands-on test for me to learn more about it and create a basic prototype that I can do some tests with and it's paid off somewhat. Of course I'm still interested in Peltier cooling and I'm working on those projects. I'm building a refrigerator but all these things take time and it's quite a battle over here so I don't know when that'll be done. Just because it's interesting you can see the loaded voltage of the thermal power right there and if you take the load off the voltage instantly goes up you can see it's reaching about 3.6 volts or so. You can see when I put the voltage through some LEDs again, it pulls it down to 2.8, which is about what you would expect for these LEDs here. Something like that, around 3 volts, 2.8 volts. The cool thing is this will just keep running as long as there's a heat source. That tea light isn't very ex uh, expensive, and you can run that for a few hours. 
And of course, I'm not harvesting all the heat that's available. So can you charge a 12 volt battery with a tea light? This is really just a quick slap together test to see if it's even possible. And I've not done a whole lot to optimize it. The voltage is starting to move up there a little bit at a time as it charges. In order to do the charging, I'm using a DC to DC boost converter right here. And that's the loaded voltage of the thermal pile. I really pulled it down. It's hard sometimes to tell what's the best voltage. But in an emergency situation, this would be better than nothing. You know, the power coming from this tea light could be just enough to charge this battery up and get your radio working so you could call for help in a grid down scenario or something like that. Since the open circuit voltage of this thermopile is up over 4 volts, I wonder if I could charge my camera phone. Of course, that's the phone that I'm recording this video with, so I'm just going to plug it in at C. Here is the charging connector. You can see it's lit up blue. And in fact, you can't really see it, but the phone is actually charging. It's actually plugged into that thermopile right now. And uh, so I can't really show that, but it is plugged in. So can you charge a cell phone camera from a tea light using a thermopile? Yes, you can. I'm sure that with a little bit of work, I can get that voltage up higher, closer to 5, 6 volts, and do a much better job charging. For a quick test, though, this is pretty interesting. And I'm intrigued, and I want to do more tests on this later. And just for kicks, here's one of those USB lights running off the thermopile. I have it wired up to a USB connection. And it's not necessarily super bright, but it is running. So that's pretty interesting. That's a much simpler setup than running it through a USB circuit. Anyway, it's just a test to see if it's feasible or not, and apparently it is. It's challenging to boil water with a tea light, but it can be done. Here you can see it's starting to approach boiling temperature. You can see the steam coming out on the left side. It takes a while, and it doesn't always work the way you would think. There's not much heat available on a tea light to boil water, so it's quite difficult to do sometimes. I'm using this to distill water using a tea light. It seems rather strange and seems rather impossible, but it's not. There really isn't much heat to work with. And as you can see, it's putting out a little bit of water and it is a slow process, but it is working. I would say that this is not ideal, but if you had no choice and you needed to distill purified water for whatever reason, even a tea light can do that job. Now here's some grid down survival skills. Can you solder a wire with a tea light? At the end of the day, a soldering iron is just a piece of metal that gets hot. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not easy, but yes, you can solder with a tea light. It's actually kind of tedious, but it does work. There's enough heat there, if you use it correctly, you can solder a small wire. This is leaded solder, by the way, not lead free. 